Hello. This is daily coding problem number five. It's medium complexity or difficulty, and it is sort of a functional programming type of deal. So what it says here is cons AB constructs a pair and car pair and CDR or cutter or whatever you want to call it pair returns the first and last elements of that pair. For example, car cons 3 4 returns 3 and cutter cons 3 4 returns 4. Given this implementation of cons right here, implement car and cutter. So this is like a lispy thing, an old school functional programming type of deal where cons is basically like you could think of it as like the head of a list and then this cutter thing is like the rest of the list so it's kind of like a way I guess that you would chop down a list and just keep working with that first element and then breaking it down and having the remaining elements kind of a pattern um, cons basically stands for construct and I think the car and cutter things were like it's debatable like people were saying oh they're registered values but what it may have been I think is that like people were used to referring to particular register values on these old school machines as those and using those in this fashion here this sort of a pattern but then the machine that Lisp was actually implemented on I don't think those were the actual names of the registers on that machine so I don't know I always it comes way back in the day of like the model railroad clubs and that kind of stuff so I just think of it as like a train car and this is that first train car and this is the rest of it and that I don't know that's just the mnemonic I use in my mind for it so right here if you just think of it you know kind of like an object oriented constructor but uh yeah, of course it's not object oriented programming it's functional programming so this is going to construct that pair and so this will basically I mean you could think of this as creating like in a really highly abstract sense is this is creating like a tuple right here right and then you could just say oh well give me that first element off of that right and then this one is taking that same constructed tuple and giving you the final element off of it or whatever but that's not really the way this works if you look at this implementation right here which is a uh, a function I think I didn't say class earlier I don't think if I did I meant to say function kinda of like if you do a quick glance it might look like oh it's a little miniature class or something but it's actually a function cons of course that returns another function which takes a function and uh, so that could be a little bit difficult to wrap your head around initially but it's not that complicated that's all you gotta do is just wrap your head around that idea so there's that we'll put that over there and then we need to implement these two deals and they need to work like so that they return these results right here so we'll copy those results over paste all this stuff down here do some good old assert statements that assert that these are in fact true statements here And uh, we'll just need to define the functions, define the car function, which will take a pair. And we'll define a, should pepate that stuff. The cutter function. Okay. So then I'll save that. So this, uh, if we look in here, this is going to tell us, this is going to let us know what we, what kind of functionality we have to take here. Because obviously this isn't just returning a tuple, right? It's, it's returning a function right here, this pair function, which is defined right here. So when we think about it right here, this, this is going to return a function, which we are going to obviously have to call and when it does what it this is a function constructor 
So just like a lot of times in a class, how you might pass in some initialization values that might get saved to like member variables or attributes or however you want to call those in a class, that's what's going on here effectively is that these values are getting burned in right here. So if we pass in a three and a four, then this is going to return a function with a three here and a four there. And they're going, they're, they're just going to be hard coded from that point on effectively. And then when we call that function in here, we can call pair like that. Um, so when we call that function, we need to send it a function in and it's going to call the function, you know, we're going to call it a function and we're going to send that function that we call another function and it's going to call it with three and four. So what we can do here, of course, is do a lambda function and it's going to take the variables, the parameters a, b, and it's going to return for car, we want to return that first one right here, the a, so we'll just return a, just like that. And so then once, uh, you know, so our function, now we're dealing with this, this lambda right here is effectively this with the three and the four burned in, right? So we're calling pair and it's gonna be the exact same thing for this test fodder right here at least, but with other tests it could be different, right? And it's going to, uh, you know, it's gonna run that function. It's gonna run this, which Lambda is just, with a Lambda you can just do one expression and it will immediately return. The other option of course is to do a hard uh, a full function definition besides lambda, but in this situation, this is a really good example of when to use a lambda, I feel like. Okay, because functional programming is just so function centric that sometimes you don't want to go create, you know, this is an anonymous one off function in this situation. Why do we want to create function definitions and have them lying around everywhere for one off use cases? So, anyway, that's why that's like that. And nearly identically, we can just paste this right here and just switch this to a B because we're returning the other half, right? And so if we were to run this right now, it should work. We shouldn't get any errors on the console. Trace back <laughs> assertion error, line 15. So uh, what went wrong here? Line 15 in modules, assert car cons equals three. Oh, I know exactly what it is. We forgot to return the return. Or I forgot to. So that was the next step. I normally would have probably punched that in right away without even thinking about it, but the um I was trying to incrementally explain the problem here. That's my excuse anyway. So what happens is um, it calls this function, right? And then this function's obviously going to return a value, which it's going to return A in this case. And then the pair function will in turn return that value. So then this whole thing will get replaced. You know, it will call the lambda, which will return A. And then this whole pair will return that value right here. And then our little car function will return that value. So it's just, you know, a few levels of nesting going on there and the same exact thing down here. So once again, cons is returning a function because there's a function defined within a function, which you can do with first class function languages and functional programming. And uh, this function itself this is its entire definition, that nested function. So it gets defined in there, not called, just defined, and then it gets returned right here. So this pair, when it gets returned, especially effectively just a memory ID location for where this definition is at in memory. And then that same location gets passed into here, and then we take that and actually add the, the parentheses around a parameter list which effectively calls that function and what we realize right here from this little interface definition of it is that it's going to take an F and at first it's like well what's an F you know you might 
think it's a function and you'd be right and right here you can tell for sure it is because they're you know it's either that or a named tuple or something but I passed it a function not that I don't know I'm not a master of named tuples so I was just saying that for example I could be totally wrong but who knows maybe one would work I'll have to read about that I've just never found a use for one of those yet so anyway um yeah same thing down here and I'll run it and this time we should get no errors no errors so that means that everything silently passed and that's how that goes and that's I guess some little intro into functional programming and that pattern and paradigm thanks for watching